uh, last in the last class we had talked about formalism and substantivism today what we want to do is you know we uh, we uh, want to go a little deep into that and when we say that the primitive or simple societies cannot be explained their economic transactions or what you know exchanges that they do uh, do not fall in the ambit of modern economics when we say that what do we mean by that that is what we are going to do today okay that is what we are going to do today okay so we'll just see some examples to yeah okay yeah so we'll just see some examples to see you know if uh, you know how when we say that you know the primitive or simple economies cannot be explained by uh modern laws of economics demand and supply and profit maximization we'll just see a few examples for that so okay melanovsky found one of his most are you able to hear the audio in the video yes sir yes sir you were able to hear the audio right it said melanovsky were you able to hear that yes sir yes sir okay all right now has everyone been able to join has noel and others been able to join let me see sir two more minutes sir noel has been able to join okay okay two minutes okay let's i'll wait for two sir inform that them that join from email because same was happening with me yeah, so uh subham were you able to subham i think you are there already subham you are already sir, i am there i am there sir noel is having issues sir okay, okay, i am okay. trying that uh, i okay, even okay. sent him the mail he, okay he okay joined. all right all right okay okay so ask noel to join and then we can start by the way this is julio oh wow sir please show <laughs> is is run away come here julio come here i thought it's a soft toy that's what i thought by what is sir doing with a soft toy <laughs> no 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 he is so not able to see you okay not able to hear me wait no no okay chat wow oh, this one this one this one this is this is oh, julio okay. mm-hmm. he he used to be julie yeah. but then we realized that it's a he so the name that changed really... to julio <laughs> julio 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 yeah okay uh noel has noel been able to join Yes. My audible, sir. Yeah. Uh, is this Noel? Yes, sir. Yeah, you're audible. Yeah. So, Noel, uh, you are able to see my screen. It's a blank screen. You can see that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can see your screen. And, so and right. Yeah, I can. I can see your screen. Malinowski found one of his and able to hear that audio. Malinowski. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So I'll play it for everyone. Now we start. Watch it carefully and listen to it. Malinowski found one of his most important examples of the rational function behind a seemingly irrational behavior in the Trobriand custom known as the Kula. The Kula was the trading expeditions that these people made. They went from island to island exchanging goods. What did they exchange? They exchanged apparently useless goods, arm shells and necklaces. And if I gave you my cooler partner an arm shell, you had to give me in exchange a necklace. And my trading partners in another direction, I gave necklaces to, and they gave me arm shells. So Malinowski describes the cooler in great detail, and he fills you in on all the aspects of it: how the crews are recruited, what magic they're using to make their boats uh, safer. and people were taking big risks for these trips why were they doing it what was going on here and he says how we've got a society the trobriands without policemen without law courts how are people punished for antisocial behavior and he says the punishment is that people break off these exchange relationships with them so they are excluded more and more from society sometimes temporarily sometimes in longer term so in malnoski's latest study 
exchanges or the exchange system is one of the main mechanisms for the control of behavior. Understanding the functions behind customs like the Kula helped Malinovsky to learn an even greater lesson, that he and his fellow Europeans had more in common with the Trobrian people than they had ever imagined. And so the final conclusion is people are pretty much the same everywhere. Yeah, so everyone was able to hear and see that video? Yes, sir. Okay. So before we discuss, you know, what all uh, points we noted down, keep those points to yourself. We'll see two more short videos like this, very small videos. Mm. So potlatching and feasting to us. Ever since uh, I can remember, my family's been part of the potlatch system. So up and down the west coast here on, on Vancouver Island, on the mainland, and the Kwakwakiwak people, uh, we potlatch or we feast. And so potlatching and feasting to us happens for a variety of reasons. It, it can be a wedding, it can be a, a memorial or a like a funeral type setting, it can be a, just a celebration of life, uh, it can be a coming of age for young women, coming of age for young young men, uh, the first naming of little, little ones uh, when they're about 10 months old, it can be to right wrongs from the past. It can be to pass over wealth or dances or treasure to other families or to individuals within the family. So my family has been involved in the potlatch and feasting system since, well, forever. Uh, my grandparents uh, have always potlatched and always feasted. Even throughout the potlatch ban, they made sure to uh, to secretly uh, practice their culture in order to preserve what we continue to have today as a, as a family. So this video was regarding what? The potlatch. And so regarding match. Okay. And the first one was first one was regarding Kula. Kula, Kula system. Kula export latch. Okay. Let's just have another one. One small video. Uh, uh, you know, most of fest. You sorry? No, 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 Semaga Pig Fest, you know, I did not, I tried to get some good videos for that, but I could not get some good videos for that. And the ones that I got were very lengthy videos, which I cannot, you know. So it uh, it will be, it can be a you know kind of homework for you to try and find out some uh, videos on pig fest and watch it yourself because the pig feast which videos are too lengthy to be shown in the class so the second this video is also regarding potlatch only in a nutshell it's some some scholars have called it the, the feast of merit or uh, it's a very generous distribution of food and gifts and nowadays cash to a large extent by one kinship group to another. And those who give, and they also are the ones, I call them hosts, they're hosting the party, the ritual. They, um, in the Tlingit context, they usually, are the, or they always are actually, are the ones who have suffered a loss. So they are basically thanking, hosting, entertaining, and gifting another kinship group which had helped them previously through the hard times, helped them with their own gifts, with uh, uh, emotional support, and with uh, ritual services they had performed, like um, in the old days would be cremating the body, guarding the body during this liminal transitional period. So it's a, it's a return of this sort of gratitude. And the very important part of the exchange is actually uh, words of gratitude in return for words of comfort. So oratory is very important, although it's in decline, unfortunately, because the language has declined. 
but people still say thank you in a rather elaborate way in English. There's also songs, and in these Northwest Coast cultures, a lot of this performative dimension, performative aspect, singing, dancing, uh, is ancestral property. So what I perform as a clan leader or member is not my personal property, it belongs to my ancestors. Also, the ceremonial garments we wear, they depict our crests. So this is all ancestral. We also, the potlatch gives us the arena, the ritual context within which we pass down the names of our ancestors. So that's the proper uh, context where we give names to the newborns in our clan. It's sort of like all the clan business is conducted in the ritual. And also, of course, it gives the opportunity, it's the legal, proper, ritually appropriate, culturally appropriate location for uh, advancing the rank, through the ranks based on your performance, on your generosity, on your knowledge, or, or going down if you haven't performed well. Okay, yeah, so we are done with that thing now. Sure. Yes. Sir, once we play the first video, yes, sir, we missed the part. Which one, which one? First one. First one? Okay. It's a very short video, so I don't have any problem displaying it again. But had it been a lengthy video, I would have said, take it down as homework. <laughs> but, okay. First one. Malinowski found one of his most important examples of the rational function behind a seemingly irrational behavior in the Trobriand custom known as the Kula. The Kula was the trading expeditions that these people made. They went from island to island exchanging goods. What did they exchange? They exchanged apparently useless goods, arm shells and necklaces. And if I gave you, my Kula partner, an arm shell, you had to give me in exchange a necklace. And my trading partners in another direction, I gave necklaces to, and they gave me arm shells. So Malinowski describes the cool in great detail, and he fills you in on all the aspects of it, how the crews are recruited, what magic they're using to make their boats uh, safer. And people were taking big risks for these trips. Why were they doing it? What was going on here? And he says, how we've got a society, the Trobriands, without policemen, without law courts, how are people punished for antisocial behavior? And he says, the punishment is that people break off these exchange relationships with them. So they are excluded more and more from society, sometimes temporarily, sometimes in longer term. So, in Malnowski's later study, exchanges, or the exchange system, is one of the main mechanisms for the control of behavior. Understanding the functions behind customs like the Kula helped Malinowski to learn an even greater lesson, that he and his fellow Europeans had more in common with the Trobrian people than they had ever imagined. And so the final conclusion is, people are pretty much the same everywhere. Yeah, so Madhav, were you able to see it? Yes, sir. Done? Thank you. Okay, sir. fine. Welcome. So now what we will do is we'll go into our this. Yeah. So we saw three videos. One was regarding uh, Kula, the two were regarding potlatch. What all could you notice? What important points did you notice? These guys, anything important that you noticed? So Kula was basically you know, for kind of a negative reinforcement for any uh, social behavior as punishment. Okay, so Kula, just one second. I want to be able to, okay, so what is happening here? Uh, uh, I think I'll need my mouse or what? No, just one second, guys, just one second. Just one second.
Give the mouse, please, if you're not using it. Please. I'll give it back. Okay. So, yes, Noel, you are saying something? Yes, Was basically. Yeah. Yes, sir. No, Subham, so I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, Noel, sir. So, I basically I was telling Kula were nothing but trading expeditions, you know, where they moved from island to island, exchanging goods. You know, and the okay. purpose was basically as a negative reinforcement, you know, as a, to use it as a form of uh, punishment for any asocial behavior or, or, you know, ostracize any member if they're yes. not following that code. Okay. Yeah. So I'll come to this. Yeah. So it was basically an exchange thing, but also, you know, to punish someone, they would stop exchanging with someone. That's like a punishment. Right. You know, like, you know, we, uh, in traditional cultures, it happens. Okay, let me first take down the points and then we'll discuss. Yeah. Anyone else? Any any, any other thing that you noticed? Any Sir, also, uh, like uh, mm -hmm. the person who was saying it, he said that the things that they exchanged were of no use. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so it was an ethnocentric, like I thought maybe it was useful for them because yeah, yeah, they no, valued I, uh, money yeah. over uh, all those things. Like yes. they, it was considered okay. invaluable for them. Okay. So, uh, valueless stuff that that was being exchanged, things of no value as right. per the maybe uh, maybe symbolic, sir. Maybe yeah, so you can, this is called uh, this is called what kind of exchange? Symbolic exchange, butter. Sim yeah. No, no, not symbolic. It is called uh, ceremonial exchange. Okay. Yeah. Ceremonial exchange. So we'll discuss these points one by one. Okay. Anything else? Sir, the in the end, I have the video, the very important point, uh, hmm. which Malinowski learned about the, this, uh, from this Kula exchange is that, uh, means the punishment, type of punishment, that yes. uh, everywhere in the world, we are same. Just we have different ways uh, of uh, dealing with the things. Yes. Means so the, punishment punish point. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. the, type of punishments we give are maybe different. The ways may be different, but the basic principle behind that isolation in this case. Yes, isolation. Good. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sir, and, also, hmm. you know, the, there were a lot of risks involved. With the high risks. Risk. Yeah, so high risk. Like, risky journey. Uh -huh, risky journey but, for something that seemed to be in, of no value. Exactly. So that means it okay. was something very important and indispensable to their culture. Yes. Good. Anything else? Anything about the potlatch? Mm. Okay, so potlatch, yes, you know, sir, usually... sir one thing. Yeah, yeah. Tell sir, me. I don't. I am not finding anything wrong with the potlatch system. Why has it been banned? Yeah, I will. We'll discuss that. We'll discuss why it has been banned. Okay, we'll discuss why it has been banned. Uh, it it has been. It had been. It has. It said it has been reinstated now. The Canadian government yes, later realized its mistake and they have again <laughs> allowed it. It had been banned. Okay. So we'll get to that. So the banning of thing. Yeah. We'll get back to that. Uh, any other thing that you, so, so one thing I want to say is, you know, potlatch usually in most of the sources, most of the sources, when they discuss about potlatch, they don't go into much detail and they don't, you know, so mostly they just mention that this is, you know, for increasing your status. Have you read that regarding potlatch for increasing your status? You, the Sir, more you it, gift... it was related to conspicuous consumption, conspicuous like... consumption. Yes, very uh, much. Show off. Show off, yeah. But you know, what is not mentioned in most sources is when uh, when it is done. See, it is very important. It is uh, it is done at almost every important occasion. Someone is born, someone sir, is dead. Occasion any important. ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. Any ceremony. You know, someone born, someone dead, you know, someone's funeral, someone's uh, you know, uh, giving name, Namkaran. You know, we call it in Hindi Namkaran when, when the name is kept for a child. Uh, coming of age, so you know pu puberty rituals for guys or girls, ro you know writing a wrong. So someone has done something wrong here. Accepts okay, fine. I I made a mistake. I realize my mistake, and I'm giving a feast for that to 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 uh, atone my mistake. At you know at as an atonement. So uh, it was such an important you know ritual. What happened in the ritual, we'll see. But 
this ritual was so important it was done in almost every important you know uh, point of their life whenever they had any important thing you know they 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 celebrated it or mourned it with a basically it was never mourning it was mourning it was always celebration in fact even when someone was dead i i i did a lot of research you know on youtube regarding this so even when someone was dead and the funeral the the funeral may, the 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 potlatch that was happening that was also not for mourning that was not for being sad even that was for celebrating why because potlatch was done once you know uh, there was a realization among them that yes so this person has now been freed from he's he's gone on to a different journey and that person is looking down upon us and he's asking us please be happy don't miss me i am happy wherever i am you guys be happy so remember the good things about me you know remember the good things i did in my life remember the you know uh, positive th- things about me and be happy so the soul is asking us to be happy about him so we be happy we do not be sad anymore so even the one that is done during funeral is also a celebration so basically it's celebrating everything in life that is what it was yeah so, so any other similar point? kind of situations we also have in hindu society yes we also have you know when uh, basically the kriya karm when it happens you know basically it is also that is uh, also a celebration it's it's a celebration definitely so yeah we are sad but also, it's a celebration also sir in every uh, every uh, important occasion of our life we mm-hmm. have these things of giving daan to the brahmins yes and yes. Uh, also uh, other like smaller caste also yes like, so uh, see that's why you know in, in complete... the first video remember the last line of the first video yes that melinos that we are all the same that was the yes, last sir. line of the first video yes, right sir. Melinowski yes. realized that we are all the same, whether you are in Europe or Asia or Africa, we are all the same. So you are saying the same point, you know. That there is so much similarity, and this is amazing the kind of similarity that we have, despite possibly never having been in contact. Amazing. So you know, there was this movie uh, I have talked about, a cartoon movie, Coco, where there is a the Mexican society is shown, where there is they have a day of celebration called uh, called the Diaz de la Mortes, so the uh, Diaz de la Mortes means the Day of the Dead, right? So when uh, they celebrate or they kind of remember the ones that those were dead. So I remember that these kind of celebrations are there in almost every culture. You, know? um, you have in in Hindu society also that you have it. Uh, you know uh, when we have pind pind dan. Every year we remember them and we. offer gifts and stuff uh, we offer food to their soul in i think in muslims also there is a festival called shab e barat i think it's for the same purpose they go to the graveyard and they remember their dead so i thought you know i mean amazing similarity in the cultures despite being thousands and thousands and thousands of miles away and a lot of these cultures cultural practices have developed after the human populations are already been separated it's not that you know they all developed in africa and then people migrated carrying those practices to different parts of the world these practices developed way way later maybe these some of the practices may be i don't believe any practices older than 10000 years old 99.9% of these practices originated after 10000 you know uh, so within last 10000 years when people settled down as agriculturists so by that time we were already separated in different continents and still we have so much similarity how this is amazing thing yeah so yeah any other points that you you guys noticed sir their uh, ceremonial garments and the singing garments, and dancing the singing for and the dancing portlets. yeah on the garments you would see the you know, different kinds of animals portrayed yes in sir in the portlet you know there some you may have an eagle sometimes they have a whale sometimes you know they have a wolf this is something related to totemism which we will discuss when we discuss the chapter religion totemism okay. so every clan has a symbol a totem and these uh, people the, the the ones that we are seeing were the kwaki utal people kwa ki u t l can you see can everyone see my screen yes sir Yes, they are the Quaquitel people. They are found in on the west coast of uh, North America, in parts of Canada and USA. And uh, so, for them, you know, these symbols—the ones a uh, clan has a symbol as eagle, which means that 
they came from the eagle their first ancestors came from the body of an eagle they were an eagle you know before becoming humans whale wolf different kinds of animals are their totems and they worship them and they also you know if you study more about them you will see that these symbols are very important when they die for every dead person they erect a wooden pillar a big wooden post is erected and on top of that for example if it is a you know whale clan they will there will be a big whale on top of that pillar you know, there will be a big whale what this signifies is that this person has returned back to the whale he has returned back to being a whale after ending the life as a human I'm not going into that that will be too deep but yeah that is the significance of these animals on their garments they are their totems okay so you know so when discussing totemism totem chapter we may not again you know uh, look into the kwakutal but you guys note it down and remember that even this is an example of totemism okay. yeah any other points that you noticed sharing of food music traditions sharing of large. traditions in the pot latch so passing down of traditions basically you want to say passing down of tradition from you know one generation to other that is what you are saying yes sir okay passing down okay any other, any other important thing that you guys noticed sir it sir. is still continued still continued yeah still very much on so they are still trying to hold on to the tradition yeah tradition goes on still continue sir, despite the ban loading. yeah oratory loading you know you have to call yeah. out oratory yeah. loading you know so they it is diminishing and, but yeah it's an important yeah aspect. diminishing that is more important diminishing why diminishing why is it this oratory loading so oratory loading what is oratory loading so you know you thank people you thank people you know for being with you when in your difficult time so they use different kind of you know impressive language to thank people so that is you know oratory lording but they also said it's declining why is it declining people are not more interested nowadays no because that he aspect. said that their no, language no, is declining the reason ha huh, yes exactly language no, he said is, that the language uh, is declining. declining so people often are nowadays using english but english even that is in decline because people don't understand that old language is going down you know that old language is having lesser speakers now so you uh, know, this is one example you can think of you know when talking about a uh, change happening happening in tribals because of contact you know you also notice their dresses very much western right they were you know yes, like yes. just like you know the, uh, hmm. it's just a festival so they have come to do all this but uh, they are like any other normal usa citizen they did not look like american indians did they no right they were so just uh, right uh, using those clothes above the basic clothes as yes. a symbolism that yeah, they are yeah. symbolizing now we are following tradition today mm. also yeah so this is this you know it is a visually you could understand that you know the thing has changed so much right right so now i'll quickly you know look into some important ones the punishment one is very important um taking a very risky journey for something that seems invaluable so basically you know that that author he author is himself a anthropologist so he was not being ethnocentric he was basically basically uh, trying to explain the things to a very layman so for to a layman he was trying to explain that you know for you these things will be very useless and why do they take so much risk so he was not being ethnocentric he was trying to put it in simple words so that non anthropological people can understand so things that are not economically very valuable for outsiders but so much risky journey for it why we'll look into that uh another important thing is regarding this punishment thing so punishment you know we'll we'll uh, we'll basically see when we study the so we are doing uh, you know uh, economic organization after this we'll do political organization under political organization we have a topic about maintaining of law and order how law and order is maintained in simple societies so this is one such example one such example where to punish someone you know do not you know beat him up you do not put him inside jail there are no no jail and no policemen but people are scared of the punishment what the punishment is to banish someone to it's called bitlaha what is called bitlaha in a tribal language in in, in which tribe uh, munda tribe and all bitlaha Very means matlab ki pura isko samaj se bahiskrit kar dena bahiskar so can you can you spell out for the class bitlaha b i b i t 
एल आई ए समथिंग करके मतलब इट्स ट्राइबल लैंग्वेज सो नॉट एक्यूरेट इन दिस स्पेलिंग सो देन अदर गाइस कैन नोट इट डाउन इट्स अ ब्यूटीफुल थिंग यू नो दैट ही एंड सो इट्स लाइक यू नो इन हिंदी देयर इज अ वर्ड बहिष्कार टू यू नो यू नो इट इज द हार्डेस्ट पनिशमेंट गिवन इन ट्राइब्स in 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 traditional world you know traditional societies it happens you know because even in today's indian villages forget the forget the tribes even in traditional peasant villages also people fear this kind of punishment you know when others will stop interacting with you you know others will you you would be remembering um, after 1857 revolt there was a deccan riots history may have you read guys deccan riots Yes. yes anyone, in Deccan riots, one of the ways you know where the way the 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 mar the money lenders and all they were punished is that the villagers you know kind of ostracized them. They stopped. So the 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 Dhobi Nai Band it was called. So the village ka washerman will stop washing their clothes. The village ka barber will stop cutting the hair of their family. So they will all totally disconnect and not keep any relation with them. That was also kind of punishment. it happened in the deccan riots at time pe. okay so even in today's rural rural india this kind of punishment is feared a lot when people will stop interacting with you and that interaction is nothing but reciprocity people stop <laughs> reciprocating people stop reciprocating they will not have any reciprocal relation with you people they will not you know, have any give and take with you this is one of the most feared uh, punishments and it is used for law and order in simple societies we'll see that in uh, next topic that is political organization now getting into our today's three major examples of how simple societies you know have their exchanges on all excuse me sir yeah yeah sir said in the chat for students about bitlaha <laughs> okay so can everyone see the chat yes sir okay bitlaha so if you guys can copy from the chat you can copy it down i'll copy myself thank you suraj oh thank you sir i will copy it copy it somewhere what happens wait okay actually this punishment is given when uh, when the मतलब जो जिस पे आरोप लग रहा है ना तो उसमें तीन चार पंचायत होता है सबसे ग्राम पंचायत खाप पंचायत एंड देन वी कॉल सेट परगनायत पंचायत मतलब सबसे बड़ा पंचायत उसमें भी अगर वो ये एक्सेप्ट नहीं करता है अपना पनिशमेंट तो फिर उसको पूरा निकाल दिया जाता है सन वो ग्यारह गांव में वो आ ही नहीं सकता है सो दैट इज कॉल्ड बिटलाहा सो पीपल हु नॉट स्पीक हिंदी फॉर देम आई ट्रांसलेट इट और सूरज कैन यू ट्रांसलेट इट फॉर एवरी वन डिंदी यस सर see what happens uh, we all know that uh, we have certain level of panchayat this same things happen in 6th uh, schedule and 5th schedule area 5th schedule as you know is the tribal area so they have their own uh, way of uh, judging about the punishment for example a boy is leaving a girl without a proper uh, proper reason so the gram level panchayat he said that you are wrong he does not accept it so 5 or 10 again 5 and 10 village they gather together and again they said that boy is wrong again he does not accept it then there is called 21 villages or 11 villages the depends upon the area how big it is so the biggest panchayat when it say that you are wrong you have to accept it and still he does not accept then the bitlaha punishment is given that wo pure from all 21 villages he is thrown out no contact and they also have a punishment that if they have to come back to the society then they have to give a big feast that big feast, feast have, yes yeah right that feast has certain other names i'm not able to recall it right now yeah so these kind of things you know feast for atonement of wrong and all this is something very common in lot of simple societies you know yeah so now we'll come to our Sir, examples uh, yeah I mm-hmm. have a doubt. Like uh, the modern day economic sanctions are there. No? They are mm-hmm. they are also similar to similar yes, to this. Yes, very much, very much. We I think I have noted it down somewhere in this PPT only that you know these kind of uh, 
withdrawal of reciprocity we stop reciprocating with you this is not something that will found, find only in you know tribal world it is very much there in international relations also the sanctions you know this is very much the extension of the same thing and internationalization of the same concept very good point that you you know brought up okay, okay. You, you should you know you should write these kind of things in your answers you know to show that you are not just writing something bookish but you are also applying your mind and you know connecting it with the things outside your syllabus okay. very good point you know good okay so um uh, yeah so three important things that we'll see you know how what kind of exchanges and uh, transactions take place in simple societies three major examples pula exchange potlatch and sembaga pig feasts okay so before getting into this, th these three well let's understand what are the different types of modes of exchange in simple societies after understanding the modes of exchanges then we'll get into them and try to understand under which mode of exchange does uh, pula fall under which does you know this potlatch fall like that we'll understand so dif different modes of exchange in simple societies kal polani pronounce it vinodini you know the pronounce it pronounce the name uh kal pola polani good you have done it okay okay yeah so kal polani in his book the great transformation 1944 he said that there are three modes of exchange in any society so he is not only talking about simple societies he said that types of exchanges happening in simple societies tribal societies or in a modern us and uk also they all fall in these three reciprocity redistribution and market these are the three modes and we'll go into the first one reciprocity so reciprocity is the exchange of goods and or services between two or more uh, parties without use of money at its face value so some important things the exchange is not only between two two or more can also be involved we'll see how how more than two are involved we'll see that and without the use of money at its face value so in reciprocity there may not be use of money at all you know just reciprocating with goods for goods or goods for services services for goods you know uh, one simple example is you know uh, you have this sutra service in sutra service The, the 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 boy who wants to marry the girl he goes and serves the girl's family for certain time so he's giving service and in return he's getting the bride i will not say it's a good or a, that he's getting but he's getting something in exchange of service so there may not be use of any money and when money is used also so money is never used not like that money may be used may not be used may be used but when money is used it's not used at its face value so reciprocity for example when we gift someone you know so we go to a marriage we go to a marriage we had a good you know we go there we have we take part in the feast we eat uh, in the feast we eat you know nicely in the feast someone gives 11 rupees in the envelope someone gives 21 rupees someone 100 one someone 500 one someone may give 1000 one okay this money that they are giving is it the money value of that food that they ate no no, no. sir it's a way of reciprocating and showing that yes thank you for inviting me thank you for the nice you know uh, uh, meal nice dinner and your uh, good hospitality and wish you all the best in your married life and please this is something from my side give that so you know they may give a fruit basket they may also give a envelope of money so money may not be used and if it is used it's not used for its face value the face value of the money is 101 rupees that doesn't matter so money may not be used or not or when used not used at its face value this point is clear to everyone yes sir yes sir, okay. yes, sir. now so this is reciprocity in simple terms now now sahlins so karl polani said that there are three ways reciprocity redistribution market inside reciprocity there are three types which was given by sahlins marshall sahlins gives three types of reciprocity generalized balance and negative we'll look into them 
generalized reciprocity so everyone follow the lines written on the slide okay generalized reciprocity is the gift giving without the expectation of an immediate return so you are gifting without expecting immediately to be gifted for example look at a simple example you go to a you go with a friend and you buy something for the friend if uh, if, if you are shop, shopping with a friend and you buy him a cup of coffee you are not expecting him to you know at that that very moment he will buy you a, another cup of coffee and return it right so you are gifting without the expectation of immediately getting the return okay you may expect you know that maybe sometime in the future you may give me some gift not necessarily a coffee mug give me something else you know, maybe so when you are gifting you may have an expectation but it's not explicit and it is not demanding ki right now i need it if you want that right now then that is not generalized reciprocity okay that is one thing second thing is the exchange is between two or more parties again two or more parties how two and more parties i will explain in the next slide i'll explain one who gives may or may not get the return as they may may be fulfilled somewhere else so i am giving something everyone can see the slide yes sir yes sir okay for some reason my right click is here not working yeah it is working now pointer options okay so this is me this person is in hospital he needs blood i donate blood this is me first thing is i may never get blood in return for this i may never get it if i never need it i will never get it right first thing second thing is after 10 years so so uh, i i don't know about this my brother told me that, that when you donate blood you get some certificate that you can use to get blood later yes sir you, this happens there is something like that right yeah yeah so for example i have donated the blood i i got the certificate for that i got a certificate for donation of blood i may never need that so i will never get return of what i have said i have given blood i have may never get the return and even if i need it 5 years 10 years down the line it is not b who is going to give the blood to me right am i going to bl get blood from b himself or no, herself sir. no it will be someone else's blood okay so someone has donated which blood i am getting so first thing is in generalized reciprocity there is no immediate expectation you may get it immediately but usually you don't don't expect to get immediately first thing second thing is you may never get it also and third thing is you know uh, that more than one party is involved i give to b but maybe i am getting from c i am getting a blood that was donated by c i never give to c i give to b but i am getting from c so this is generalized reciprocity and more than two people are involved in this exchange clear one who gives may or may not get the return as they may be fulfilled somewhere else you know so i have donated blood to b if later in future you know, b also has to do, donate blood he will donate it to someone else maybe to to x you know because he gets to know that someone needs blood he donates and that someone may not be me so his blood is going somewhere else so what i gave the return is not coming to me it is fulfilled somewhere else returns are always delayed and there is no question of just equivalence so this is very important first of all it's not immediate so always delayed i may not get it and even if i get it it is not immediate it's always delayed and no question of just equivalence can anyone tell me what is this no question of just equivalence means uh, sir it's like not if i have me. given something of worth rupees 500 it does mm. not mean that i will be getting of 500 it can be yes. 50 it can be 5000 not an yeah. equivalent so so you're right so it will not be of equal value there is no question of demanding an equal value here right some examples blood donation i already explained parental care to children so often happens you know often not often it always happens parents take care of children 
although they will not you know want the child to do something right now but possibly there is always you know a expectation that when i get old my child will take care of me right so there is an expectation of getting it a return later in the life and they may not get it it may be passed on somewhere else for example i take on. care of my child my child moves abroad usa he sets up his nuclear family you know marrying a american girl he passes on the care he got from me to his children so i took care of my child expecting of a delayed return in my you know old age i may not get it my care it, it may be passed on to someone else right it may be fulfilled somewhere else gifts on marriage marriage is an anniversary so suppose it's today it's marriage of madhav i madhav has invited me i go to his marriage i give him a gift so i am not expecting him to give me a you know a return marriage gift today itself because i am not getting married today but i expect that when i get married later maybe two years later maybe one year later i expect that you know maybe madhav will give me something so even this is a generalized reciprocity no immediate gifting you know expectation of getting it later i may not get it also but expectation is there that maybe later he will give it to me kula when we study kula we will understand how kula is a generalized reciprocity and along with kula there is also something happening that is not generalized reciprocity that we will understand in the coming slides sharing among the inuits and the kung we had discussed in the last class so when the inuit guy he went to hunt or the uh, san guy he went to hunt he got the hunt he came back he shared with everyone he doesn't want them them to return it right away because obviously he got the hunt and they don't have something to return he is gifting them but there is an expectation that some day if i am not able to go out hunting if my family doesn't go out hunting someone else will hunt and they will gift me uh, they will they will you know share with me and my family will not go hungry so there is an expectation of you know later sir, i have i have a question sir uh, so uh, yeah. in this gifting sir there are two things right one is actually expecting whether i will get a return Hmm. and the second thing is the timeline the, whether i'm getting immediate return or not right mm-hmm. so in generalized mm-hmm. is expectation there or expectation also sometimes is not there you know so sometimes expectation will also not be there for example okay uh, for example uh, you know uh, when i'm donating blood i usually do not expect to get back no one wants to be hospitalized right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that's why i have always used the word may you know you may expect depending on situation yeah, yeah it's not always that you expect and you know one more thing generalized reciprocity usually happens between very close kin very close family members like i gifting my daughter something i do not re- usually expect you know to re- her to return it back so there may be expectation but in many cases there is also not even an expectation right okay yes sir thank you okay yeah. so that's why you know for these things use the word may okay levi strauss's alliance theory this is something that is related to chapter marriage but i inserted this here so that we also get an example of reciprocity and we also understand a little little bit about levi strauss's alliance theory i'll explain that before that this uh, agricultural tribes of munda orao gond so in jharkhand these tribes are agricultural tribes they have been you know cultivating lands for a very long time they are agricultural tribes so they produce food in their fields at the time of transplanting paddy the close and distant relatives come together and help each other on completion of this okay no so there's something on gone missing fine this line will not be there the last line will not so you know for agricultural tribes not just for tribes it happens for even peasant societies like in my village in banaras also i have seen that you know when uh, the transplanting of paddy happens that's a really back breaking work you know the paddy transplantation is very very difficult very hard uh, in very tough time of agriculture you know people lot of people are required so around this time what happens lot of relatives even distant relatives they suddenly appear and they help us but there is an expectation you know that when they need we will help i have seen another thing in our village uh so we have huts in the village we call it madai in our language we call it madai madai is actually a hut okay 
a hut made of bamboo and on top of that there is lot of thatching of say uh, you know hay so sometimes you know that that uh, it's very heavy to lift it and place it on the top of the uh, mud brick house very heavy so when this happens when suppose my family is working on its uh, thatch the entire villages you know all the uh, able bodied young men from other houses of the village they come and help and when it happens to the, uh, you know in their houses we, you know people from our house go and do it so this is called generalized reciprocity okay now i i i i told about this example let me explain this so levi strauss who has not heard about levi strauss by the way this is, this is not the levi's jeans okay levi strauss anyone has heard about uh, no anyone who has not heard about levi strauss please let me know i will explain just have heard his name sir i don't know why his significance yeah. and anything so uh, i have told earlier you know i would again keep saying this you know that it it is always advisable to have a copy of the syllabus when we discuss okay so i would i could tell and you could look look up in the syllabus so mm -hmm. in the syllabus uh, paper 1 unit 6 paper 1 unit 6 is about theories different th anthropological theories in that uh, there is a theory called what is the name of theory guys anyone cultural materialism no levi strauss sir it's uh, is... wait If yeah someone said just structuralism replied. structuralism who is that who replied ashish sir ashish ashish okay good ashish so that is structuralism structuralism is the theory given by levi strauss so levi strauss's theory is quite complicated but very interesting extremely interesting a lot of people would advise you to leave it avoid it in fact a upsc topper who got 45 rank upsc he told you know uh, to avoid it he said that levi strauss has written his theory after being high on grass or weed so what can we understand even he would not have understood what theory has written a topper said this but it's not that difficult it's very interesting yes sir And very interesting once you understand you will remember all your life so levi strauss's theory will not get into the theory right now but he had talked about something called alliance theory alliance theory his theory is basically about you know uh, binary opposites binary opposites according to him everything comes in binaries yes no good bad white black truth false us and them life and death nature and culture nature is natural culture is man made so like that so like that there is something called us and them us and them so he said that primitive man early man early bands when man was living in band societies different bands roaming around hunting gathering so obviously there would be enmity you know dushmani there would be a uh, hostility between them because you know they are all competing for food so that feeling of us and them this is our band this is their band and we are enemies so this binary opposites and whenever there is this binary opposite there is a mediating factor so there is band a band b there is a mediating factor that will try to end the hostility and that mediating factor according to levi strauss was what gift of women he says that tribe a and tribe b or band a and band b would have felt that let's end the hostility you know it's bad for us our existence we you know both the bands will die so let's build relationship so they gifted their women to b and b gifted their women to a exchange of women for marrying off so women of one band married off to another band and their women married off to this band so women being married outside the band and not inside this band so according to levi strauss this was the beginning of beginning of those who are writing answers in our answer writing incest taboo great so incest taboo why are you know people not allowed to marry their very close relatives the taboo on marrying close relatives taboo on incest where does it come from so levi strauss says this is where it comes from it comes from this you know 
primordial thing of hostility and then trying to end the hostility by gifting women so let all the women of my group be married to the other group and their women to my group this is how you know people said okay so no 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 we will not marry any of our women inside our group all women have to be married outside the group no one from inside the group can marry a woman inside the group no marrying inside close relatives this is how incest tab was born according to levi strauss cannot be proven cannot it's just a theory that cannot be proven now but when this is what it's happening between two groups group a group b all group a women going to group b all group b women going to group a this is not generalized reciprocity this is balanced reciprocity which we will see in the next slide sometimes what happens is a b c d e f a may be marrying off their women to b but b not marrying off to a b marrying off their women to c c to d d to e e to f and then f so a giving away their women but not getting it immediately not getting it from the party that they had given to but from someone else sometime later delayed reciprocity so this is what levi strauss called generalized reciprocity among gifting of women so this is also an example of generalized reciprocity and levi strauss says that societies did this to have a bigger you know uh, social uh, understanding and good harmony with all the different bands so that all the different bands would have good harmony among themselves that is why they did it and this is a classic example of generalized reciprocity okay guys and levi strauss calls it alliance theory he says so that this kind of reciprocity no 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 a giving to b not getting from b a okay, to b okay. b to c you know ghoom phir ke baad mein aa raha hai right it's coming later so it's generalized reciprocity if it would be between a and b then this is okay, sir. balanced reciprocity which which levi strauss also also called restricted exchange restricted exchange okay and this is called generalized exchange right he calls it alliance theory because according to him the bands were able to form alliances with other bands okay we'll come back to this later but a rough idea could you understand roughly what is it yes sir okay after generalized reciprocity let's go into balanced reciprocity in balanced reciprocity there is an explicit expectation of immediate return though there may be delay sometimes sometimes there may be delay but the person who is giving is expecting to get it back as early as possible some examples like simple barter when we do barter barter may it happens you know not much delay i am giving you you also give me i am giving you one cow you give me one buffalo or something like that barter may you expect you know immediate return supermarket purchases in modern societies in modern societies if you are taking a good you have to pay the money otherwise you know they will not let you leave the mall okay so this is a very simple example of balanced reciprocity another example when christmas gifts in the western world are usually a form of roughly balanced reciprocity if you go to someone you know a home of a relative or a close friend on christmas and give them a christmas gift there will be an expectation of getting gift from them you know in the same christmas okay and if you don't receive it is considered that you know they are socially not very good yes So what about Halloween festivals? Halloween festivals. In Halloween, you also, give candy to kids, but you don't expect. Yeah, so Halloween may you give, but you don't expect, right? So that will be, that will be generalized reciprocity. Okay. So after understanding the concept, you can yourself have a lot of examples. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so so you know, see, see, this is very subtle difference, you know. for christmas if i am going to someone's house and gifting a christmas gift i expect that he will also give me on that day itself on 25th december that year itself balanced reciprocity but look at this on the other hand giving birthday gift if it is a but birthday gift birthday gift i am giving <laughs> i am gifting to someone i would would not expect him to give me a birthday gift today itself right it will come on my birthday so this will not be balanced this is generalized reciprocity in balanced reciprocity there are not not more than two parties always two parties okay exchange is between two parties in balanced reciprocity 
in generalized there could be more than two we saw that the one who gives generally gets the return in in generalized reciprocity we saw i donated blood to someone he may be donating blood to someone else i will not get it back from him that happens in generalized reciprocity but in balanced reciprocity generally the one who is giving will get the return though it may be delayed although there is expectation of immediate but they may they may be delayed or may be unequal examples diwali you know sweet gifts you know in diwali in we have we go to you know all our neighbors uh, homes and give them some sweets and we expect you know that the bowl that we are taking to give the uh, sweet will come back with that bowl you know again filled with sweets right for those who have diwali you will know that nowadays it's happening very less but it used to happen when we were kids you know we go in bowls filled with sweets or all those kind of stuff you know prasad of diwali we go to a neighbor we give it to them and we expect that they will fill it up for us and we'll take it back has it happened to you guys yes sir it happens right we expect them to you know give it to us at that very sankranti moment. also sir sankranti also yeah you be chhat puja for those who have chhat puja you would see you know you give so suraj you would have you know ex experienced in chhat puja yes, you are sir. gifting and you want it right you 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 when you take that you know, banana and everything thekwa and all you sir, give it to in, them and in, they would also give it in chhat actually this does not happen because uh, what our custom is that we give uh, prasad where chhat is not happening in which house exactly. chhat is not okay yes. okay 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 so see i was not aware so i did not mention it so you can excuse me because no, uh, sir, sir. in mm. in our family you no know, actually chhat puja doesn't happen but mm. what i have seen in diwali i mentioned it here yeah so diwali is a good example because it's exchange of sweets and all so you guys give a very good example of generalized reciprocity yes sir that you know you usually give the give it to uh, those homes who are not having chhat puja who will not return you the gift very nice example yeah theek hai jajmani system निशांत आर यू देर इन द क्लास निशांत नो सर ही इज नॉट देर ही इज नॉट देर ओके सो इन द आंसर राइटिंग प्रैक्टिस निशांत हैज गिवन जजमानी सिस्टम एज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बट एक्चुअली नॉट रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूशन जजमानी सिस्टम इज सिंपली अ बैलेंस रेसिप्रोसिटी देर इज अ हाउस होल्ड अ बिग लैंड लॉर्ड एंड देन ही इज द जजमान एंड डिफरेंट कमीन्स सो देर इज अ वॉशरमैन there is a iron smith okay there is a gold smith there is a carpenter there is the barber you know and all those so they give their services to this person you know and in return they get grains from this guy this is one example where it's balanced reciprocity they are expecting in return they are also have a rough idea how much they will get depending on the service they have given but it is a little delayed this doesn't happen automatically so this is a unique example where the return is delayed but it's balanced reciprocal it's not generalized i have you know the iron smith has you know supplied iron tools to this landlord's family he does expect that he will get from him only the grains right so this is balanced reciprocity but a little delayed it, ha it happens you know once in 6 months or once in a year after harvest it happens another good example bride price bride price is a balanced reciprocity the the tribes where they have house bride, bride price acha bride price not dowry bride price bride price mein the bride price or even this you know even even uh, your uh, uh even your suitor service suitor service yeah so both what happens is the bride the boy the boy's family is compensating the girl's family for taking away a valuable uh, yes, you know labor force from that house so they are taking away the girl from that house who would have helped them uh, in in their fields and all her children will also be you know be born and belong to the boy's family and the girl's family is losing all that you know important resource so for that the girl's family is compensated and sometimes this is very high sometimes the price is really high now again by the word price do not take it as a you know buying and selling 
this is okay. a custom where the woman's labor is respected and uh, the family is compensated for losing that labor force okay so this is also a generalized reciprocity in lot of african tribes what happens is some tribes are inland they live away from the ocean and some live near the ocean so th those who live near the ocean they do fishing throughout the year and those who live in inland they do lot of agriculture and they mainly grow yam anyone knows what is yam yes sir what is Bull? it okay. no, it's no. like sweet potato just bigger yeah, in like size super, it's, yeah it's like sweet potato rich in starch and glucose and all okay and carbohydrates and stuff it's a very uh, nutritious food like our uh, sweet potato no wo oh, sakalu uh, i'm not sakalu what is it called sakarkan sakarkan or something yeah so that sweet potato similar it is but it is much uh, bigger and much harder it's a crop so they grow it you no know, the the ones in who are inland so they exchange it this exchange of fish and yam in african tribes is also generalized uh, balanced reciprocity Uh, this is a unique example i had got while watching some videos it's a jajmani like thing but it's unique in the sense ki it's happening between a tribe and a non tribe so the gond tribes in chatisgarh they have this relation with the mahars of chatisgarh who are in the caste society they are not tribal they are non tribal they are caste society and this is gonds are tribes they have this exchange wherein the gonds have lot of cows but they do not take care of the cows they give their cows to the mahars the mahars take care of the cows throughout the year and in exchange the gonds give them food and other stuff so for taking care of the cows the mahars get uh, you know reciprocated by the gonds this is also balanced reciprocity herskovits herskovits observed balanced reciprocity relations between four primitive tribal groups of nilgiris very famous in the nilgiris the badagas the kotas the todas and the kurumbas kurumbas the todas are pastoral tribes rearing buffaloes okay and the kotas the kotas are artisans they make you know things of iron and wood so they, you know so they are no like they make uh, iron weapons wooden weapons and all those things they will make Mus musical instruments and uh, the kurumbas the kurumbas specialize in you know rituals and magic magic tona totka jadu you know all kind of magic and rituals practices okay so what happens the artisan kotas they serve the agricultural agriculturist badagas or badagas so badagas are agriculturists they are cultivating and having grains so kotas are artisans the kotas provide you know with them with the all the implements for agriculture in return the badagas give the kotas grains the pastoral todas they get the, their all implements from the kotas and like pots pans and knives and in return they give the kotas milk okay milk and other uh, animal products from the buffalo and uh, the kurumbas they provide the magical and ritual services you know to the others so when it is like for example the todas in todas you know they have lot of rituals and all for example when they have the bow and arrow ceremony you know what is the bow and arrow arrow ceremony in todas anyone yes anyone sir what is the what is it yes tell me sir it is to determine the legitimacy of the child Yes. So purush, what exactly happens? Purush, it is called something like Purush Piti or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I also know that name. Yeah. yeah, but I know uh, bow and arrow ceremony. What happens is, yes. So was it Kritika or Nisha? Sir, so Kritika. Kritika. Very good. So what happens is, you know that Todas are, uh, they have poly. Avenculocal society. Avenculocal, but their marriages are polyandrous. Polyandrous. okay so one woman has several husbands so she so, does not have several husbands she has multiple partners husband yeah. is one only the one who the one, the one, the who, one who ties arrow, that yeah. thing yeah yes, the sir. bow and arrow are you talking about the okay no 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 see you are confusing you are confusing them with the nayars yes exactly sir you know, she said about nayars you are nayars tali tying 
and sambandham mm. okay yes 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 you sir. got confused okay? yes mm. sorry so, sir so I, i also got you're speaking with so much confidence i also got <laughs> confused <laughs> sorry sir okay so okay, guess okay so see uh, these todas they are uh, buffalo rearing pastoralists in the nilgiris you know um, they make beautiful huts they have beautiful shawls you know that they wear uh, they are basically they are the, the the gender ratio is such that women are lesser because they practice female infanticide used to practice things are not the same now so due to female infanticide female numbers were lesser and uh, one woman used to have several husbands poly polyandrous society you know now all these husbands are brothers is fraternal polyandry okay they are brothers so when the woman is pregnant in the fourth or fifth month of pregnancy there is a you know so they do not celebrate marriage marriages are not celebrated what is celebrated is this thing the bow and arrow ceremony so when the woman is pregnant a ceremony will happen where one of the brothers will gift a bow and arrow to the woman gifting of this bow and arrow means that he is accepting that he is the father of the child the child gets a legitimate legitimate father and this is the bow and arrow ceremony so for this ceremony also lot of things will be required rituals mantra puja paath havan and all those things whatever that will be done by the kurumbas so kurumbas provide this kind of magical and ritual services to all the other three to the kotas to the badagas and to the todas and in return the kurumbas get agricultural produce from the kotas sorry uh, but from the badagas they get artisanal products like you know pots and pans and knives and stuff from the kotas and they get milk from the todas so this is a beautiful balanced reciprocity involving four different groups which was studied by hershkovitz in 1950s unfortunately it is no more there it is almost gone because uh, out of these four the uh, todas have really advanced some of them have you know become government servants uh, and the society has changed a lot got a lot of western education no more bow and arrow ceremony they are also having live in a lot of from everything. the various schemes of government yeah they were able to take uh, advantage of a lot of schemes of the government so whatever this balanced reciprocity is no more there but this is an example the last type of reciprocity is negative reciprocity so if i have to draw a diagram generalized reciprocity will be something like this uh, c may get from someone uh, a may get from someone but we don't know who so this is generalized reciprocity balanced reciprocity will be okay negative reciprocity will be something like this what this means is look at the arrow very thick arrow coming from a to b b is trying to get or is getting the maximum out of this transaction without giving anything or giving very minimal to a so a is hardly getting anything or not getting anything and b is trying to take everything right this is negative reciprocity negative reciprocity occurs when there is an attempt to get someone to exchange something he or she may not want to give up or when there is an attempt to get more valued thing than you give in return this may involve tricking someone forcing like coercion or hard bargaining for instance this is a example for instance you know someone you know has got a job somewhere else and quickly needs to go away and join in two days and desperately wants to sell you know the car or anything and you know the desperation that this person is desperate and whatever price i offer i will get it so you try to buy the products very cheap you say you know i can only give you this much i sorry i cannot give you more in desperation that person will you know sell off that thing suffering a lot of loss so here you use a trick you know you you try to trick you use some kind of coercion to you know uh kind of thuggery you know to try to get as much profit 
at the cost of the other person this is an example of negative reciprocity at times negative reciprocity does not involve taking advantage so in the last one someone was taking advantage but it may be willingly also so dowry all this and yeah a dowry i'll come to that i'll come to that see i have mentioned dowry here you see this in capital letters can you see the screen yes sir yeah so we'll come to that but before that since i in the last slide we saw that you know it often you know uh, is like taking advantage of someone but that is what is given in almost every source every books you know says that it's always you know kind of cheating deceit theft robbery but may not be the case always sometimes it may be willingly also for example look at this example someone may willingly give you more than you believe that you that so so for example a poor student a poor student wanting to go to an expensive university might be polite and respectful towards a rich uncle with the hope that he will help out financially the uncle may gladly pay his nephew's or niece's education in return um in return because of the attention and recognition that he receives so just because the of the respect you know that the poor chap is showing you please uncle i know you can help if you help bahut acha ho jayega it will be very good you know i will be able to change the fortunes of my family i'll be able to study and all those things so here this rich uncle knows that he will not get you know uh exactly the same thing in return that he is giving you know he's spending a lot of money for this guy's education it's kind of a one way traffic he is giving the money without getting anything in return so this is also an example of negative reciprocity but it does happen because some people you know give more importance to the respect or the attention or the status or the you know izzat respect you know rather than money so in such cases you see there is a negative reciprocity one party is getting most of it other party is not getting anything other than respect so this is an example of willingly getting into a negative reciprocity okay other examples are obviously theft is there you steal from from someone's house you without you know you are not giving them anything they just stealing robbing dowry and marriage by capture so while bride price was balanced reciprocity because the brides you know uh, side they lost a valuable resource but they got some you know something in exchange but in dowry the girl's family is losing the girl also and paying money also you know and what the boy's family does asking for more money you know so dowry is an example of negative reciprocity marriage by capture any example of any tribes that follow marriage by capture those who are writing answers almost everyone has written this answer yes a marriage by capture yes any examples of any tribes sorry pahariya tribe of jharkhand sorry pahariya yes. do they have i am not aware about this okay sir so they may be having obviously when you are in jharkhand tribe, there are some tribes sir there are some tribes sorry pahariya may be one of them yes, yes i knew about the bhils doing it i knew about yes the mp bhils in mp bills in mp naga naga tribes lot of naga tribes gonds also gonds gonds may be it is quite possible ah, hey, yes, but yes, i but i think in the there. gonds and bills what has happened even in nagas in all of them what has happened mm. is now it has become mock capture we mock discussed capture, about that right yes. mock capture mm. but yes, they sir. used to practice so if they are doing marriage by capture you know capturing the girl forcefully without you know compensating the girl's family that is also negative reciprocity negative reciprocity uh observed observed okay this is very good you know so normally it is said that negative reciprocity is the feature of non tribals of the plain people i mean the the people the, the the village and the city people who are very greedy the tribals are non greedy so tribals uh, uh, do not get involved into any kind of negative reciprocity but even they get involved unwillingly Sir. unwillingly yeah ओराव हो और मुंडा में भी है सर ये पोस्ट मैरिज ओके 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 मैरिज बाय कैप्चर इज देयर राइट यस सर ओके ठीक है ओके सो राइट नाउ कमिंग टू यू नो द ट्राइबल सोसाइटीज इट इज यूजुअली सेड दैट दे मोस्टली हैव जनरलाइज्ड रेसिप्रोसिटी और समटाइम्स बैलेंस्ड रेसिप्रोसिटी दे डोंट हैव नेगेटिव रेसिप्रोसिटी बट इवन दे हैव अनविलिंगली दे फॉल इनटू नेगेटिव रेसिप्रोसिटी दिस यू नो थिंग विल बी इन पेपर 2 
when we talk about the problems faced by the tribals that is in paper 2 but when talking about the problems faced by the tribals um all the tribal problems there you will forget this term reciprocity because it was in paper 1 but do not forget when talking about tribal problems of paper 2 do mention this term from paper 1 of negative reciprocity the examiner will be impressed so for example this is an ex, you know when when there there is an exchange between the tribals and non tribals exchange between tribals and non tribals the so non tribals often try to uh place the tribals in the negative reciprocity situation this has been happening since times immemorial so especially from the you know british times from the colonial times in the colonial colonial times we know that you know money lenders traders and uh, you know a lot of these people they entered the tribal societies and they started robbing them off you know they started you know giving them loans at very exorbitant high interest rate grabbing their lands you know so this is a negative reciprocity that has been happening with the tribals since especially since the colonial times before that it was not much there very few examples usually from the colonial times the tribals have always been on the wrong side of negative reciprocity in the hands of the administration in the hands of the money lenders outsiders traders businessmen they go in there they try to get their land they try to get bonded labor from them without paying anything you know uh, so and whatever tribal products they are selling they try to get as much of it as possible by paying as less as possible you know? so all these things land alienation impoverishment bonded labor indebtedness you know that happens in the tribal uh, things that you will read in paper 2 all they are example of negative reciprocity isn't it right or yes, wrong yes sir right yes sir okay. now look at this slide can everyone see everything on the slide yes right. sir yeah try to identify this is the groom side groom means the the ladka the boy the guy i am losing out my cursor yeah and this is the girl side i think i need the charger just one second guys i think i need the charger just one second Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. So, so you see the girl side and the boy side. So this is the movement of the bride. Again, okay. so right click. So this is the movement of the bride. The girl is moving from this side to that side. bride wealth is moving from that side to this side what kind of exchange what kind of reciprocity is this balanced balanced reciprocity okay fine this is balanced dowry what kind of reciprocity negative negative reciprocity suitor service balanced balanced, balanced. balanced. gift exchanges Balance. 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 No, sir. It balance. can be general. Balance. Oh, balance yeah. It can be. It, it can be general. It, it depends. You know. So, for example, sometimes what happens is only one side is gifting. Then you can say it's a uh, you know uh, generalized reciprocity. But no, usually, but that it will not be considered a gift then. If only one side is gifting. So, yeah. So usually in marriages, what I have seen is you know they both sides try to give gift and they try to match it. So you know they see that the other side has given you know. a uh, ba baskets full of good fruits you know like say pomegranates right. expensive fruits so they also say yaar we have to gift you know but we also need to take care i mean they have given such expensive fruits we will have to give at least some you know expensive fruits so they try to even match the kind of value of gifts that they have got i have seen that personally so the example that i saw that was uh, balanced reciprocity so suraj you have seen anything else you can say 
ऑफ़ <laughs> and you also are afraid of doing marriage by capture so what will you do so i have to go and serve uh, in yes. her home for some days yes I'll... so you go and serve in her okay. for 3 4 years by that you are paying off the you know bride price yes. in service by doing service and then you get the right to marry the girl this is suitor service okay sir yeah madhav tell me sir why dowry system nowadays is prevail more than suitor service sir because the suitor service and these things you know have been part of tribal cultures they have not been part of you know normal uh, agricultural societies why this has happened clearly there is no clear cut answer but the thing is that uh, in the tribal societies women always have a higher status than the non tribal societies in the tribal cultures you see if you go a tribal culture you see that women can go out of the house you know and they don't need to take permission from anyone um they can you know marry anyone they want they can marry at any age they want usually they marry late you know they uh, if they if they uh, they get widowed they can remarry again okay uh, and they are not burnt with the husband like a sati system and all but all these things are usually not allowed in the traditional non tribal society widows were not allowed to get married they had no choice in their marriage uh you know uh, so they they are not allowed to go out you know so these kind of things show that the tribals have always given better status to women compared to the non tribals so the women and usually this is a feature this bride price is usually a feature of horticultural societies in horticultural societies where there is they depend on some small gardening of fruit uh, you know uh, vegetables and stuff for their subsistence there the labor, labor of women was very helpful and these societies valued the women's labor and so for them loss of women women after marriage going to the boys home was a big loss they would not want that loss so to compensate this bride wealth thing used to happen but you know in the normal non tribal you can say the vedic society or the the normal hindu society you know women did not enjoy a very good status after the rig vedic age in the rig vedic age they had some status after that their status has kept on declining very poor status okay so because of this patriarchy you know uh, since women are not valued that is one reason why there is no bride price and why there is dowry for that you know one reason can be so uh, uh, there are several reasons one reasons can be that i had talked about you know uh, remember this you know hypergamy hypogamy Yes, yes. You remember okay. that Brahmin, a Brahmin guy, could marry the girls of uh, any of the four varnas. Right. right. So, for that reason, the Brahmin guys, you uh, marrying Brahmin women also marrying, you know, uh, marrying. So, so a Brahmin. So, Madhav, pay attention. Okay, look at the screen. These are boys, and these are girls. Brahmin. क्षत्रिय वैश्य शूद्र ब्राह्मण क्षत्रिय वैश्य शूद्र सो दास्त्र दे अलाउड अ ब्राह्मीण टू मैरी अ ब्राह्मीण गर्ल टू मैरी अ क्षत्रिय गर्ल टू मैरी अ वैश्य गर्ल टू मैरी अ शूद्र गर्ल सो ही हेज फोर ऑप्शन हुएवर ही फाइंड मोर अट्रैक्टिव विल मैरी वेन दिस ब्राह्मण वुमन this brahman woman is trying to find a husband she sees that there is scarcity of men why there is scarcity madhav sir why there is scarcity of men when this brahmin girl wants to marry a brahmin guy because lower caste no because the brahmins a lot of brahmins are married to other other caste women also yes, sir. So they are getting so four castes are available to our, to the brahmin guys so they are marrying in all all castes but brahmin women can marry only brahmin guys they cannot marry a lower caste guy in, as per shastras 
so for this that there was shortage of you know boys so this girl's family they used to you know to attract a brahmin guy to marry their daughter they started giving dowry so dowry began because of this uh, rule wherein you know the brahmin women had to marry anuloma brahmin guy pratiloma. only anulom pratilom yeah because of this dowry may have started that is my assumption it may have started in the brahmin society started in the brahmin society now we know of a process called sanskritization wherein other varna other caste they tried to copy the brahmins you know and maybe they also tried to copy this dowry practice and that is why the dowry spread in all the varnas that is my assumption we we'll have to do a lot of research to see why dowry is so prevalent but this to me sir? seems a logical explanation yeah so there is another theory that uh, dowry was actually given to the bride not to the groom it was actually the bride yes. wealth from the father's yes, yes. side yes correct 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 because Stridhan. there was Stridhan. no stridhan so because uh, when uh, the first like when the father had sons his property would be divided equally among the sons but Very the daughter good. because she is going to another family she will mm-hmm. not be getting the property yes so yes, these yes. things would be given to her Yes, yes, yes. So, mother, sir, and uh, also there is another yeah. concept like in Hindu society, especially uh, this Indo-Gangetic plane. That mm-hmm. uh, uh, in ge- this is uh, this was another the generalized system where uh, we have the concept of tilak. Okay. So, uh, uh, like, लड़के के साथ मतलब लड़के का तिलक होता है. Try. To, uh, so, uh, I'm uh, sorry, but no, we have to try to speak in English all the time so that others can also follow. ठीक है. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So, like, there is uh, this uh, system of tilak, where uh, he is given cash amount, and they give uh, gold jewelry and ornaments to the bride. Like, the groom's side will give uh, gold to the bride, and the bride's side will give cash amount. So, okay. uh, this thing was there. So, this is on uh, another reason why dowry became prominent. Okay. So, did I make the second concept clear? No, second concept I could not uh, understand. What? May I may I join the in the second concept? What yeah, yeah. she is yes, trying so to say that mm. uh, in tilak it is mm. almost a balance reciprocity because yes, cash has been taken by the yes groom and yes, the bride yes. is given. Yes, yes. Initially it was balanced. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Actually, this but how it became concept. how it became dowry. So you see, the problem happens. But then, later it became. Yeah. Why you continue, ma'am? Why it became, Kritika? That is what Madhav wants to know. Madhav wants to know why. Why? Why? Okay, Madhav sir. Is, like is, like, with the uh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you could. Yeah, just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Tell the reason. Sir, I think with the uh, like with time again, this uh, the reason which you gave that was uh, that became prominent. Initially, okay. this was the system. Like it yeah, was so... uh, a system of gift exchange, mm-hmm. but later because of shortage of men. uh the okay. dowry thing became more like yes, cash yes. amount which was so, given to uh, the yeah, right. groom side that became so it had it may have been uh, you know a gift kind of thing but later on because of shortage of you know proper suitors you know the fathers would try to uh, you know give as much woo the groom that's why woo the groom yeah and also the thing is also maybe because of the prevalence of you know uh, you can say okay and another another thing is uh, i'm just i just forgot i forgot i forgot i forgot but yeah so two very important things three important points we came to no one was this hypogamy hypergamy thing because of which shortage of you know uh, grooms for the brahmin women for which brahmin family started to pay dowry uh, and this custom was copied by others because of the process of sanskritization where other varnas wanted to copy the brahmans for upward mobility yeah now i got the another point i had forgotten upward mobility is also a thing you know when we t- uh, read about achieved status and ascribed status in there uh, i had read an example that happened in india in many places it happens in india it also has happened in medieval europe you know um, in medieval europe so there is a guy belonging to a noble family okay? and uh, often you see you know this this movie cinderella and all often the 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 hero is belonging to a royal you know family and the girl belongs to a poor family the cinderella stories have you seen that yes sir yes sir 
all girls were definitely would be knowing the yes. cinderella story yeah so but the girl was not from a poor family she was nah, treated I mean, like yeah she was treated like one it's you know like they have added some masala in the, in the movie to make you know her belonging to a very high uh, but usually there are a lot of these kind of stories where uh, you know a, a royal blood guy is attracted to a poor girl and he marries her and all those kind of things see this is all a medieval feature in europe that uh families used to try to get a royal boy for their you know uh, daughter uh this because this connection this relation will also uplift their status in the society this same thing also happened uh in india a lot it happens a lot why why do you say that you know in up bihar there is a price tag for an is officer for a doctor and all this why people want to associate with that high status you know this guy is an is officer okay so if my daughter is married to him you know our family status will also go up so let's marry our daughter to an is officer for which they have to give a huge you know this uh, dowry so dowry is a feature of stratified societies bride price is a feature of non stratified the, the most important point after all this discussion is this bride price is prevalent where the society is non stratified there is no uh, nothing called you know upper status lower status all belong to the same status all families are of the same status now here since status is not important status is not there so now what is important okay this family is losing valuable labor so she the family has to be compensated that is what is important but in stratified societies outside the tribal world the societies the agricultural societies are very stratified so in stratified societies status is important okay so we are to belong to a lower status we want to move up for that we need to marry you know have relation with a family in the upper you know uh, strata so either you know we try to get a girl of an upper strata for our guy which usually doesn't happen normally doesn't happen normally it is that they look for a guy from an upper strat- strata for their daughters to move up the ladder so it's a feature of stratified societies where they want to marry off their daughters to what they perceive an upper strata guy for which they have to shell out money and that is the genesis of this dowry system okay madhav i think you have enough points now yes sir okay yeah we don't have much time today what is the time 9:56 9:56 9:56 we'll go for another 5 10 minutes okay and oh. yeah so now now we are done with all this now there's a question at the bottom can everyone see the question guys can you see it or yeah you can see can dowry be a generalized reciprocity think over it how can dowry be a generalized reciprocity i am saying it sir, is if the... it can be sir Yes. Tell me. So, how. if the mo- money is given on on their own willing, or uh, that kind of thing will be generalized. But if it is uh, on their own out, willing, I do not understand. If the fa- uh, girl's father wants to mm-hmm. give the money by himself without the groom asking for it, then that kind of thing can be a generalized res- uh, reciprocity. But if it is pulled out, then it is a negative one. So, okay. So they are giving willingly. but even in this case isn't it like you know that case we hear you know where the poor chap <laughs> approaches a rich uncle negative uh, poor that chap approaches okay still... let me speak to a uh, uh, vinodini so we saw an example where a poor chap approaches a rich uncle rich uncle willingly gives the money but still here also the rich uncle is giving out a lot of money and not getting anything in return even that was example of negative reciprocity right vini okay sir yes sir yeah so here also even if he gives willingly he is losing out money also he is losing a daughter also so it's negative reciprocity only okay sir yeah suraj you are explaining how it becomes generalized reciprocity uh, yes sir see actually the concept of uh, dowry is that it is a stree dhan it is given to a, a daughter for its for its uh, what we call mm. रहने के लिए जो स्टार्टिंग है फॉर हर ओन यू नो या फॉर हेल्पिंग हर बेनिफिट्स या या फॉर हर बेनिफिट्स या बट हर मेंटेनेंस या बट इट कैन बी अ जनरलाइज रेसिप्रोसिटी इफ लेटर एट सम सम स्टेज द बॉय टेक केयर्स ऑफ द फैमिली ऑफ गर्ल्स फैमिली और आल्सो हिज ब्रदर और सिस्टर 
it can be okay. a generalized so it, system. you are saying it can be you know agar yeah. if he does like that what i am yes. saying that in most cases in these hindi heartland states in up bihar in most cases the dowry is a generalized reciprocity i can explain that if no one else is able to explain sir uh, one aspect of uh, dowry being generalized reciprocity is like uh, with nuclear uh, family system mm-hmm. the when girl goes to means with boy live uh, to live with mm-hmm. boy uh, the con- the condition of the boy sometimes is not that much to uh, start his uh, life uh, yes at the uh, in, okay. in the in a regular manner so mm-hmm. it is like uh, girl's father is helping him out or helping them out both of, both of them mm-hmm. to start their uh, what uh, their family life okay. Uh, okay. at a good uh, in a good manner okay so it's 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 kind of help from girl's uh, father or girl's family to girl and the boy to bride and the groom to be uh, to live a life uh, to live a good life to start a good mm-hmm. life rather than mm-hmm. live to start a good life so in this uh, manner we can consider this as a generalized reciprocity so it is not in uh, means they are not getting uh, something in uh, return but yes they are getting satisfaction for that that their <laughs> girl is in a She's good stage okay. okay i'll have to uh, think over it you sir one more you... thing can i try yeah. this yes sir okay uh, but before sir, that no uh, uh, deepak what you said okay but noel when you are speaking it's showing subham are you guys using the same email id or something i don't know so whenever noel is speaking it's showing as subham rao rane so that is probably because i he, when he was he wasn't able to join i sent him my email which i okay, got okay so, so that, yeah that, that is, is why. Why. That yeah is so i'll uh, before uh, listening to noel uh, deepak the reason that you have given uh, i'll have to think over it i am right now not able to uh, accept it or reject it i'll have to think over it okay yes yes sure and so actually okay. i am uh, the way the presentation may be uh, not that much apt no i understood i understood now i'll have to think over it can i can i yeah, classify yeah. it as yes yes noel yes sir uh, sir it can be a generalized reciprocity in a way that they are not expecting the return very immediately right so during the wedding right uh, the bride groom's father is not expecting that you give the money up front right but they expect that over the time right so there is you know a flow of gifts coming from the groom's parents you know but it is still uh, you know even if it is happens in a delayed manner still it is one side you know which is giving it up everything right mm-hmm. okay i i i'll i'll, I'll explain uh, my point of view what happens see in most of the families you know Hello. what happens is they take dowry for their sons in their son's wedding and they use that wealth to marry off their daughter to someone else yes sir that's what so, that was sir, that trying to connect it fine. like Hello. i was also connecting trying to connect it with the blood example yes similar like the blood donation yeah, yeah, yeah. that is what happens in a lot of uh, families uh, where dowry is uh, practiced that they you know usually ha- i have like you know i'm giving an example where a family has two daughters to marry off they'll keep thinking what to do what to do what to do okay thank god we have a son so we have two daughters we'll try to get a lot of dowry you know, for our son's wedding and then using that we'll pay dowries for our daughters so that money keeps on passing that money came from family a to family b when family b is marrying off their daughter the dowry that they got for their son they are using to marry off their daughter now family c is using that money and it is goes on passing 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 maybe sometime in future it came it may come back to the same family a it may not but it may come back you know sometime in future but this passing on isn't it like you know generalized reciprocity yes sir it is right yes, similarly sir. uh you know so yeah so so this can be so dowries can be generalized reciprocity and in most cases this is the reason that they give you know that we also have daughters to marry off what to do why will we not take dowry you know how you know why will we, we, we you know be so good you know uh, we will not take dowry but when we are trying to marry our daughters they will ask for dowry what will you do then so we have to take for our son so that sir, we can keep for our daughter 
have you heard this logic yes sir it is like yes sir yes sir i have heard so this made me think that yes, dowry sir. can be a yes, generalized sir. reciprocity then it should be balanced reciprocity sir <laughs> why balanced reciprocity sir in bihari families exactly. they literally uh -huh. okay so for see okay so uh, who is saying balanced is it deepak yes sir so i Not have a exact, something uh, fun thing to same say same relation but in circular relation it is a balanced reciprocity then no balanced reciprocity it will always happen i should it will happen between two parties mm. ah, yeah, i give right. you you mm. give me mm -hmm. but when it goes on from a to b to c to d e that becomes generalized reciprocity okay. see come okay. back to the slide of balanced reciprocity you see here uh sir what is the key then for generalized reciprocity exchange is between two parties now what is so so uh, noel is asking i guess yes sir like what is yeah, the what is keyword it? is is it the uh expectation of immediate return is it the you know lack of expectation or is it the cycle of movement of things you know what is okay i'll tell you look at this line for balanced reciprocity the one who gives generally gets the return the one who gives if he gets the return is called balanced is balanced reciprocity what i gave the dowry now my my money is passing on to other family from there to other family this one more thing sir in balance generalized reciprocity but when i give and i get in, in and uh, from the I, i i'll give it and from them only i'll get it so i give family a gives to family b and family b returns to family a they are returning among themselves so first of all there will be two parties for balanced reciprocity noel two things there have to be two parties for balanced reciprocity two parties only not more than two a b b a aapas mein right first thing second thing is the one who is giving is also getting one who is giving is also getting a b a b b a like that but when it goes on a to b but b is not giving to a b is giving to c c is giving to d it goes on like that and maybe it will come back to a sometime or maybe it will never come back that is generalized reciprocity okay sir got it okay you know since you are you know, uh, reading it for the first time it is confused It is definitely. But once you read and think about it, revise it, stop and no, the, think about me, what you are reading. For me, the question was basically you what to focus on. You know, the three parameters basically mm. of generalized. One is the timeline thing. One is the expectation thing, mm. and third is the movement part. Right. So, what is the key emphasis? You know, the movement part, the cycle of movement of things, mm -hmm. goods and gifts is important. Mm. Got it, sir. Mm. Got it. Yeah. So you know, and one more thing, I'll tell you. they are not clear cut you know they are not totally different from each other there is no strict line between generalized and balanced reciprocity i can take examples which fall in both like that also so they are a little mm -hmm. confusing right but right. You know, we have to pick up few examples which we can explain nicely in the exam and just practice those examples okay okay oh uh, yeah you have someone is going to say some fun thing was it kritika yes sir Yeah, Kritika, was it? What is the fun thing you want to share? Um, sir, actually, uh, many times when they bargain for the dowry, the uh, the groom's side actually say that we have two daughters or three daughters. <laughs> Marry off. Instead. Yeah. Yes, sir. So that so that happens, and I know that you know because I am from Uttar Pradesh, so I know that, and that's why I added this question here: that can dowry be a generalized reciprocity? Okay. You will see in every book. dowry is given an example of only and only negative reciprocity it is not given an example of but it can be if you can if you can explain the examiner that dowry can also be insert these cases when it is passed on you know like that examiner will be impressed okay. so we don't have time today to start coolering you know because after we are done with these three kinds of reciprocity then we would get into coola to see that in coola what kind of reciprocity is happening usually we will feel that you know generalized reciprocity is only happening but there is also something happening along with the same exchange they are also exchanging something that falls under balanced reciprocity balance. yes sir you know they are not only exchanging these necklaces shells they are also exchanging things that have money value which sure. are not mentioned in many sources okay they are called gimwali so on the same boats they not only carry these necklaces they also carry some things like fish and food and stuff they are exchanged and barter happens for them that we'll see so in the same coola exchange there is a generalized reciprocity there is a balanced reciprocity then we'll get into redistribution this is a way of you know 
also uh, exchange that happens for which the best example is potlatch kwakutl kwakutl pot potlatch and then after potlatch we'll get into the pig feasts in the sembaga, sembaga pig feasts in the sembaga pig feasts i will link this topic with not just economic anthropology but i will link it with other things also i link it with marriage part i will link it with uh, you know your uh, uh, this thing political anthropology part i will link it with cultural ecology part this sembaga pig feast is important in several ways it is linked to several topics in anthropology okay and after that last thing will be market exchange and we had a small article to be read but could not happen lot of things were there in today's class but uh, could not be completed in the next class we'll complete all these and then after that we'll start uh, political anthropology okay so uh, political uh, uh, of 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 simple societies the political things of simple societies yeah so next class possibly today is uh, third Lord. which is monday so let's have on thursday is it possible on thursday guys yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Same. Everyone, Thursday eight, eight o'clock is good for yes, me. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thursday eight p.m. You are willing to take. We are willing to come. Okay, fine. So Thursday eight wow. p.m. Okay, and uh, yeah. So that will be all, guys. Anything? Sir, one doubt, sir. Yeah. Mother sir, fixing a monetary value of a person is how much this person? For example, if a person try to do anything for the monetary value, mm-hmm. he is fixing a certain amount for him. Give me a clear example. I'm talking about dowry. That means, for example, a policeman trying to take a corruption for to do a certain thing, sir. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. He's fixing that value. That means, okay. for a person is fixed to certain amount. Yes. While so while that, doing certain yeah. marriage, his value has been fixed by someone. That mm-hmm. means his value is that much. Yes, very much. So that that is actually. So what is your question? Is it uh, right how, or wrong? How it is just for sir, sir? Yeah, so this is obviously wrong. You know, I mean, it is not justified at all. So, uh, you know, uh, and uh, this shows the kind of degradation that has happened in the society. You know, when, uh, for example, I was watching this movie. Uh, I was watching. I could not complete it. Uh, Jai Bhim. Okay. Okay. So in Jai Bhim, the first scene itself it shows. You know that there are some. You know, policemen. who want to close the cases that is there on the head because so that they can get promoted okay. so for that what they do is you know they Wrong pay case. some bribe to the jailer okay and for the, that bribe they get those tribals and put them inside prison and beat them up and all those those things so they are you know when they are bribing to get four five men to close their cases that bribe is the value of those four five lives because those four five people their lives are gone they will spend their rest of life in jail or they will be beaten up and killed or whatever so how you are able to fix a value for that life that is totally unethical so when someone is fixing a value like that you know so that is definitely unethical no, but then not everywhere it is like that for example if a doctor if for a surgery he is charging something you can say it's unethical but then that is not as unethical that as that bribe that police man is taking that doctor is taking that money to save a life uh and uh, as a compensation for his skills as a compensation for the work that he will do sometimes they overcharge that is bad but when doctor is not overcharging taking a justified fees that is not fixing a price on a life that is ethical but when this policeman is what they are doing that is unethical does that answer your question madha yes sir But buying a person in the name of marriage is never just for sale. Yeah, definitely it is. It's obviously wrong. And so these kind of discussions and things will be important when you write your GS four ethics. There you'll have to explain these kind of examples and things why it is ethical, why it is non-ethical, and those kind of things. Okay. And f- these are the examples that you can give. You know, the dowry thing you can give as an example. Okay. okay. All right, guys. Yes, sir. Anyone yes, else? Sir. Any other questions? Sir, uh, one doubt yeah. is that uh, in that uh, negative reciprocity, if that mm-hmm. rich uncle gives to the boy money, but he's not mm-hmm. expecting anything in return, no, sir. Then how it becomes mm-hmm. a negative one and not a generalized one? Hmm, it's a very good question. So, in generalized 
he is not expecting anything in return yes yes very much so as i was saying you know that uh, there is no clear cut distinction and the same example can be an example of both so this is an example that can be an example in fact after you you're telling me I'm, i i think that this is a better example of generalized reciprocity rather than a negative reciprocity yes vini okay yes sir yeah. so what we will do is you know these un- example of the uncles and the poor chap and the education these are just there in the slide to explain things in the exam we will try to give as much anthropological examples as possible okay so we'll try to give our examples from potlatch from pula you know from the pig feast and all kind those kind of things samba gavan okay okay sir yes sir yeah so and as you finish more and more of the syllabus you will see you will have more examples from different parts of the syllabus and especially uh, if you are doing some parallel study so along with the book the book talks about say uh, for example the book talks about um, potlatch but potlatch is not clearly explained so go to youtube go to you know google and try to understand what is potlatch the more research you do yourself the more awesome examples you will get yourself okay i had lot yes. of examples uh, i had some videos that i could show for tribal markets but i am not able to show unfortunately because you know um, they are in uh, hindi language and not everyone will be in, in the class will be able to follow so there is a, a, a channel youtube mein mai bhi bharat i to india okay so there this guy shyam sundar he visits lot of tribes and so i had seen a beautiful video where he goes to a tribal market and shows how tribal markets are changing lot of plastic things that are not tribal products are being sold there you know so um, and the tribal women you know usually they used to be you know very scantily clad very less clothes because that because that is fine in their society in their society no one stares at them if they are not wearing too many clothes clothes but when we are, we are interacting with outsiders you know, the way they look at them so they have to cover their body and all those kind of things those kind of small small things are there in those videos but unfortunately those videos don't even have english subtitle so i was not able to play so but you know do kind of lot of research on youtube you will get awesome examples for every topic in your syllabus yes sir okay okay right. sir right. sir yeah kritika sir sir uh, i have a doubt when we hmm. talk about negative reciprocity so hmm. so the uh, if a person is giving something and he expects something in return so will that expectation be only in terms of monetary basis or that can be for any other thing so like when, if the rich uh-huh. uncle is giving mm-hmm. money mm-hmm. for education he mm-hmm. expects the uh, boy to study mm-hmm. so okay. the boy I'll should come. fulfill that expectation yes i'll i'll explain you so in the very first slide that we where you talked about reciprocity the definition itself said that without use of money at its face value so the expectation may not be at all to get money and even if it is to get money not for money itself for example i am i'll take another example in the marriage i am giving 500 1 rupees ka envelope when i'm going to someone else's else's marriage in my marriage i expect him to give me some gift not necessarily money any other gift will also do and even if he's giving money i don't expect that since i gave 500 1 rupees that was 2 years ago so adding inflation it comes to 521 rupees so he should give me 521 rupees it will not be money for the sake of money no demand right uh, am i able to explain kritika yes sir yes sir so then right. in that case this will be a generalized reciprocity only i believe yeah, and i think that that is a good example of generalized reciprocity rather than negative reciprocity so someone had asked in the chat also that if someone is giving donations it will be negative or generalized donation can be an example of so that will also be generalized generalized reciprocity and donation is also an example of redistribution which we will discuss okay mr devil are you still in the class please respond if you are there so donations can be negative reciprocity also uh, is it mr devil no sir i am deepak okay deepak <laughs> mr devil is there <laughs> are you in the class yes sir am i audible <laughs> yeah you are so uh, so so you know uh, one thing will be that in the classes i would expect you know to uh, ask questions verbally what happens see i i am looking at your question now I'm no 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 actually back to the chat. actually i just came back home i was in a library 
so okay, okay. i couldn't speak at the time so no, i was sure, no, texting sure. you the okay, okay. my so question usually no this this uh, chat box doesn't come up automatically and it is hidden yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The, yeah huh. so i may miss the questions okay. yeah yeah it's so okay. yeah so now we are getting some clarity on this that donation and gifting like you know without expectation should not be negative reciprocity the uncle giving money to the poor chap should be actually generalized reciprocity and donation specifically donation you know like charity 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 is also an example of generalized reciprocity it's also an example of redistribution we'll see in the next class negative reciprocity see also sir negative reciprocity i really think you know that it is not an example of negative reciprocity because uh, sir when uh, in many educational institutes uh, they demand donations that is a different thing no, donation yeah, yeah that demanding donation is that is a different thing you know they, they de- Again, demand it is type of donation and uh, yeah 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 so that donation uh, definitely will... is negative reciprocity that is a mm. bad thing you know, they, for a, for a, for a medical yes. seat uh, mm-hmm. they try to loot so much you know that uh, so you can say that the guy will become a doctor and all those things so it should be like a but still you know the amount that they ask is really too much that is much. no it's way crore okay, sometimes to... for yeah so that is definitely seats. negative sir, the name is given donations just to make it positive but it is yeah, actually that is capitation fee or something exactly right. yeah, yeah. so that's Capit- actually extortion type something extortion yeah. it's extortion it's extortion so it is mm. negative reciprocity yeah by donation yes, what yes. i meant was you know this willful donating helping people charity okay yeah. so that is not negative fine so with that we'll end the class otherwise questions yes, will sir. keep on coming okay so keep your questions for the next class and the next class will start with uh, kula and all that and finish this in the next class okay yes sir yes okay. sir good night sir thank you sir good night guys bye bye thank you thank you sir thank you sir welcome